Today is Tuesday 29th of October 2013. There's been a lot of talk about a bright object in the western sky uh, in the last little while and uh, we're going to take a look at that. Um, obviously Venus is very bright in the western sky at the moment, it can be seen from anywhere in the world. Just go out in the evening and look up and you'll be sure to see it. It's the very brightest star-like object in the sky. Venus is indeed the brightest object that looks like a star. It's brighter than Jupiter and it's also brighter than the brightest star in the sky which is Sirius. And uh, there's been a lot of speculation that um, people are seeing Venus in the sky and that's where I'd put my money. Um, this happens every uh, year and a half or so as Venus comes back into the evening sky or it's also in the morning sky at certain times of the year and when people see it and they haven't noticed it before maybe because they don't spend enough time outside looking at the sky as astronomers do the first time they see it they think wow what's that is that a UFO or is you know I've never seen anything like that before and uh, in my last video I covered why it is looking so bright at the moment so you can check out that video if you want it explains why it's so bright and why it's going to get brighter uh, before it uh, starts fading again but anyway Venus is a bright white looking object and uh, some people are saying no it's not Venus that we're looking at the object that we're looking at is red so we're going to look at that in this video and see if we can try and identify what this object might be if it's not Venus and I have a theory okay first of all I'm going to show you some uh, photos that I've taken over the last few nights photos of a western sky and this, these photos and video which I'll show you later were taken through a Canon EOS 60DA DSLR camera. That's the camera there. And uh, this is a special camera in that it is intended for astrophotography. Now you can buy the ordinary EOS 60D, but this one is a DA, and the A stands for astrophotography. It has a modified infrared filter in it, which means that it's more it is more specific, it is more sensitive, sorry, to hydrogen alpha light and this brings out the, the reds that we see in, in nebulae and so on so it is ideal for astrophotography and uh, any serious astronomers who are into astrophotography some of them will have the EOS 60DA uh, I know several astronomers who are using the 60DA and indeed this one was recently purchased for our Astronomical Society and Observatory so without further ado let's have a look at some photos that I took now I took this photo, probably about 7.30 p.m. Um, when it was obviously still quite light. Now you're not going to see very much here but if I zoom in you might be able to see this blob here which is Venus and it's actually out of focus because one of the problems that I had of course was I had a great deal of difficulty seeing it at that time of the evening because it was still very light outside. But anyway I kept going out and uh, checking as the sky got darker and we can clearly see Venus here and a couple of other stars of course Venus is a planet it's not a star let's make that clear and uh, also these photos were taken just seconds apart but obviously the other thing that I'm doing is I'm changing ISO settings and um, f-stop settings and, and that sort of thing to get different results also the uh, exposure time um, so here we go here's a nice picture of Venus you can see it's very white and uh, I took quite a number of, of photos you can see Scorpio there this is the tail of the scorpion, Scorpius. Now remember that I'm in New Zealand, I'm in the southern hemisphere so for people who are in the northern hemisphere uh, the familiar constellations like Scorpio are going to be upside down from my point of view. Now in this photo here what I've done is I've scanned around the sky, I've done this several times throughout the evening. This is Venus down here and you'll notice in the next photo it's over here and I keep shifting it round into the corners so that we've got a reference point, we're using Venus as a reference point um, remember that Venus is in the southwestern sky. We talk about it being in the western sky, but it depends on your latitude and um, you know where it is at that time, uh, time of night, all that sort of thing. It does change. It's not exactly in the western sky at the moment. Um, in, in the evening, for me, it's in the southwestern sky. So I'll step through these photos so we can see Venus again in the bottom left-hand corner, top right, uh, top left-hand corner, top right-hand corner. So we're scanning all around the sky, and again we can see the rest of Scorpio. We saw the, the top end was up here and it comes down here and this is the, the head end, sorry, top end I mean the tail end is at the top 
and then it comes down and then we've got the head end or the, the pincers is down down here in fact what I'll do is I'll show you in Starry Night here we've got Venus and I'll turn on the constellations uh, where are we constellations um, astronomical okay so we can see Scorpio here and that's what we're seeing in this picture here where is it this one here so it curls round and you've got the, the pincers there so back to starry night we've got these three stars here and uh, so I'll come back to that in a minute let's go back to our photos and take another look so there's Venus moving all around the sky making sure that I'm um, getting a, a good amount of the sky to see if we can find this object that everybody's looking at like the cat there okay and what else have we got now as it gets darker obviously we're going to see a lot more stars, we've got a lot more clarity this camera is very sensitive, it's ideal for astrophotography again that's Venus in the middle moving around okay so I'm not seeing any unusual bright objects Venus is the brightest object that we can see in the, in the western sky um, again this is later on and uh, I'm getting good clarity here the, I think I had it slightly out of focus here, I could have done better on the focus with these shots but you can see the amount of detail here, you can actually see the Milky Way here and in fact I can even see a satellite track cutting through there um, this would have been a 20 second exposure these shots here, that's why there is so much detail in them Okay. so once again using Venus as a reference point all we can see are ordinary stars, there's nothing unusual that I'm seeing Okay. these are the two pointers to the Southern Cross, if you're familiar with the Southern Cross so we've had a good look around the um, the western sky, southwestern, northwestern sky, and um, I can't see anything unusual. I can see Venus. I can see lots of other stars. I can see Scorpio. I can see the Milky Way. But there's one thing that I think that people might be looking at if they're not looking at Venus. Just step through these other photos. Oh, here we go. I'll just show you these two because you probably wanted to see the horizon just to show where we are in relation to the horizon this is a bit later in the evening, here's Venus here's Scorpio down there, ok, next images again the horizon there there's Scorpio again, now if you notice in these images here they've got these funny looking orbs these are simply lens flares from the um, these lights down here, you can see more orbs around here these are just from the all of, all of these lights here, um, that's all that is, it's not Nibiru or Planet X or anything like that okay so that's the last image that I've taken now I'm going to go back and show you what I think people might be looking at in fact we can see it in this picture again this is Scorpio and here we see this very red star which is called Antares and because of atmospheric disturbance or atmospheric turbulence just the heat of the air uh, causing the the atmosphere to, to move around we get um, a lot of turbulence in the air and that causes refraction of light now I went out last night with the uh, EOS 60DA and filmed Antares this is filmed in movie crop mode which brings it up closer and as you can see Antares really flashes and changes colour and dances around with the uh, atmospheric turbulence uh, it was actually pretty good last night for the for the turbulence it was really dancing around for me the previous nights it was fairly stable but the conditions were, were right last night that uh, was putting on a good display for me now I suspect that this is what people are seeing in the western sky if they're not looking at Venus as I said Venus is a very bright white light um, but Antares is very red but then with the atmospheric disturbance as we can see, and I'm just defocusing the camera here so it actually brings out that uh, the, the colour and, and the effect you can see you know, red and green and blue and all sorts of colours there and to somebody who hasn't seen this sort of thing before I guess it would look a bit strange but that's what it is, it's, um, it's just Antares it's nothing unusual so that's where I'd put my money, I would say that half of the people are looking at Venus and saying oh my god look at how bright it is I've never seen anything like that before and the other half uh, may be looking at Antares 
And because Antares is already a red star, I wanted to show you what a, a bright white star would look like. Now this is the star Canopus. And as you can see, even a very white looking star like Canopus will also dance around and um, change colour. We're seeing mostly white there, but we're also seeing red and, and green and blue. And uh, obviously the, the, the motion that you're seeing there, the dancing around, a lot of that is, is just the, um, the breeze shaking the tripod. It was a bit windy last night. And again here I've defocused the camera and you can see all of those brilliant colours. But this is what you get when you see any bright star when it is down low on the horizon. And in fact when I took these videos last night, both Antares and Canopus weren't actually particularly low on the horizon. But the conditions were such last night that there was quite a bit of atmospheric turbulence. So there we have it. We've got Venus and Antares. Presently Antares is around about 11 degrees away from Venus, but of course that changes every night as um, Venus gets higher in the sky. Um, no doubt people will still insist that there is something in the western sky that shouldn't be there. Well, I can't see it, and if you ask any astronomer they'll tell you the, the same answer. In fact, I recommend that you go and join your local ast astronomy club. Um, they're always wel welcoming new people and you can ask any of the astronomers there if there's something strange in the western sky that shouldn't be there and I'm sure that they'll give you the same answer. As always do check out my Facebook discussion page Voices of Reason to Explain X or Vortex. I'll put a link in the description area for you. Thank you for watching. Hello YouTube, this is Dazza the Cameraman. Today is Tuesday 29th of October 2013. There's been a lot of talk about a bright object in the western sky uh, in the last little while and uh, we're going to take a look at that. Um, obviously Venus is very bright in the western sky at the moment, can be seen from anywhere in the world. Just go out in the evening and look up and you'll be sure to see it. It's the very brightest star-like object in the sky. Venus is indeed the brightest object that looks like a star. It's brighter than Jupiter and it's also brighter than the brightest star in the sky which is Sirius. And uh, there's been a lot of speculation that um, people are seeing Venus in the sky and that's where I'd put my money. Um, this happens every uh, year and a half or so as Venus comes back into the evening sky or it's also in the morning sky at certain times of the year and when people see it and they haven't noticed it before maybe because they don't spend enough time outside looking at the sky as astronomers do the first time they see it they think wow what's that is that a UFO or is no, I've never seen anything like that before and uh, in my last video I covered why it is looking so bright at the moment so you can check out that video if you want it explains why it's so bright and why it's going to get brighter uh, before it uh, starts fading again but anyway Venus is a bright white looking object and uh, some people are saying no it's not Venus that we're looking at the object that we're looking at is red so we're going to look at that in this video and see if we can try and identify what this object might be if it's not Venus. And I have a theory. Okay, first of all, I'm going to show you some uh, photos that I've 